welcome back to more Space Engineers programming with your host, Pilot Error 42. How are y'all doing today? I have. Oops, wrong button. I have something awesome to show you. It's not this. This is. This is going to be next time. It's this. What does it do? It. Oh, I pressed the button. It turns the light on and off! Hooray! Just in case you weren't sick of it, we have one more turning a light on and off by a different method. In this case, uh, I am... Stop that. It doesn't make the sound. Oh. Anywho, I am showcasing uh, scheduled actions. Uh, we're going to be using a date, date time, which as you guessed it, is a date with a time, um, as well as a queue, which is just a list. It's just a, where's the list? Where's the list? It's just a list. And we are going to be uh, also using functions as variables. Okay, so what is this and how does it do? How does it work? Um, this, just like all the others, uh, will turn a light on and off at a random interval. It uses a completely different method as we've done before, which was either, which basically, basically relied on randomizing the frequency with which the code ran. Um, in this one, this program gets run at a constant pace, um, but it will randomly choose when to turn the light on and off. So let's get into it. Um, if you don't know, well, it doesn't actually use a queue as a queue. Uh, a queue would be a list that you can put stuff at the back of it and pull stuff off at the front of it, kind of like when you're waiting in a line, or as the Brits say, when you're waiting in a queue. Hmm. Um, so here, here's our main. We run our initialization function if we have to. If we don't, if the uh, the list hasn't been initialized yet, then we run our init. What does init do? Uh, init should be all the way at the bottom. It sets up queued actions list, it grabs a reference to the light, which we've called timed delays light. Um, it grabs a reference to the timer block, uh, makes sure that it's running as quickly as we're allowed to run. Um, again, you can make your, um, you, can ma you can make a program, you can force it to run more than once per second, but the developers have said that they are limiting it to once per second. Um, currently, you can fire it off more than once per second, but I wouldn't be surprised if they put in some like hard limits on it. Um, if you, yeah. So there's that. If you really need to fire it off more than once per second, you may be better off using more than one programming block. Um, whether they're identical or not. Anyway, that's a topic for another time. Um, so we've in initialized, um, and here's the magic guy that does all the actions, which I'll get to in a minute. If our queued actions are empty, we're going to queue up some more actions. We're going to say, um, here is the time where we're starting. Uh, date time dot now is, as you guessed it, now. Uh, we're going to queue up six six items. Um, we're going to set a new time. And we're going to add a random number of seconds to when we started. Okay, and that's going to be between uh, one half and five seconds because that's five and fifty divided by ten. And now here we have action one and action two. Um, the ternary operator. Um, which the code would look like C modulo 2 action 1 otherwise action 2 um, that that just it 
it it doesn't it doesn't like that. It doesn't like that when you're using uh, functions. So you have to do it a little bit more tediously where you have the action, we're setting it to the first action, which is uh, the name of a function, this guy right here, action one. We have action one and action two. Those are just, again, example packets of work. Um, and then if we're uh, an even number, we're going to make it be action two. Otherwise, it's going to be action one. Um, modulo is um, it's division, but instead of actually getting what it divide what it divides by, or divides into, yeah, what it divides into, you get the remainder. So ten modulo two is zero because ten divided by two is five. Remainder nothing. Um, Eleven modulo two is one because eleven divided by two is Five remainder one. So now you know how to, and this is a, a basic programming way of determining whether you're even or odd. Um, so yeah, it's either going to be action one or action two. Either way, the the correct one is stored in our action, and then we add it by adding to the end of our list. We add a new queued action structure, uh, which has a time of queue time and an action of action. Uh, and then we, at the end of all this, we make sure that the timer block runs again. Um, so you may be asking, what is a struct? Um, a struct is almost an object, at least in C Sharp, it's pretty much an object. Um, it can do everything an object can do except um, inherit a type, I believe. It can't, it can't subclass but it can um, implement an interface. In this case, we are implementing the uh, iComparable interface so that we can do some magic in the, excuse, oh, excuse me, the run actions do function. Um, so as you can see, it has a time and an action. And the compare, compare to simply um, it runs the compare to on the time and returns that uh, function so that so that way we can actually call sort um, on a list that contains this queued action structure and it will sort it by date from earliest to latest um, here are our two actions that would be run and it's turns the light on and turns the light off so here's the the kind of the meat the the main was almost as long as this um, here's most of the meat <laughs> of the run actions do. If there's nothing to run, forget about it. Otherwise, we sort it. Uh, why is this important? That way we know that the first action, queued action at zero, is the one that's supposed to happen uh, the earliest. So while there's still something in there, we check to see if the time in the action that we've queued up is how it compares to now. If it's less than or equal to zero, it either should have already run or should run right now. Um, chances are it will never actually equal zero uh, because it's at like the millisecond level <laughs> or m maybe even uh, finer than that. And the chances that it actually is getting to this part in the code exactly at that moment are very rare um, so definitely want to check to see if it's less than if it so if it uh, should have already run or should run we remove it from the list and we hold on to it before we remove it but we make sure that we remove it from the list and then we perform the action and it's as simple as um, notice this is not action one or action two this is um, this guy right here it is this variable, which we can then perform the, the function that's on the variable like this. Um, oh, int. It has to return something, as far as I'm aware. At least putting void in there didn't work. Um, there may be a way to do it. I didn't feel like looking it up. Um, so if you want to return something, well, that's how you do it. Um, you can also pass it parameters. So if I do this, 
then the, the function actually has to um, have a, a one boolean parameter etc you can add I'm assuming you can add as many as you want I haven't actually tested it but I would be very surprised if you couldn't add more than one um, so if it is if the earliest one should be run we run it and then it'll come back up here once it gets out of here because it uh, goes down here and there you go as long as there's still something in it um, if the earliest one is still after now then anything after it is also going to be after now so we don't have to go on so we just break and that brings us back out to our main so there you go um, again the obviously the, the turning light on and off is just example of stuff that can be done um, yeah this way you can set up stuff to happen sometime in the future um, if you know a docking takes 10 seconds or whatnot um, you can schedule it for 10 seconds from now and not have to worry about keeping track of when that should happen it'll just remove it from the queue and do it when it's the correct time. Check the code. And it's as simple as that. Bam. So, what is going to be going on next time with Space Engineers Programming? Whoa, what's that down there? I don't know. Um, and that's actually, I think, probably two episodes from now. Um, the next episode, however, is going to cover the new update to text panels. Um, as you can see, they are infinitely more useful, and we finally have a way to get to them from the programming block. So, that's a little preview for next time. But until next time, this has been Pilot Error 42. It's been a pleasure having you. And until next time, see ya!